Hey y'all, let's take a look at uh, what's called the quotient rule for square roots. We know what square roots are. We know what a quotient is. It's, it's the answer to a division problem. Um, we've done things like this already, where we've gone the square root of 3 times the square root of 7, which we've gone like that. And of course, we know the answer is just the square root of 21, right? We just multiply those together. If we divide... Uh, something with square roots like the square root of 3 divided by the square root of 7, we can, we can write it like that as well. But it's generally accepted to have an answer uh, in algebra where you do not have an irrational number in the denominator. Remember what an irrational number is? A number you can't express as a fraction. Because when we talked about fractions, there's only, like, you have, if you have two-fifths, uh, you'd get this as a decimal, 0. 0.4, that's, that's it. If you had, you know, I don't know, um, one ninth or something like that, that would be 0. 0.11111, you know, it would just repeat. That's the only two choices you have for fractions. Since both pi and uh, the answer to a, a square root that doesn't have an integer as, a, as an answer are, they never repeat, the decimals don't repeat. So that is considered irrational. So we don't leave an answer like this in, in the denominator. Uh, so we're gonna have to do something to that, to what we call rationalize the denominator, which means we turn the denominator into a rational number that can be expressed as a fraction. I'll show you how we do this. All right, so they will give you problems like this. Write this in simplified form. Well, if you have the square root of five over three, that is, by definition, the same thing as the square root of 5 over the square root of 3. Okay, but look here. We have a square root that doesn't have an integer answer as a denominator. We don't want that. We want it to be a rational number. So what you can do is, if you remember, on a fraction, remember how you used to do this when you were a kid? You'd go two-fifths. They'd say, turn that into something with tenths as the bottom. And you went, okay. Well, 5 times ah, 2 is 10, so I'll do 2 times 2 is 4, and that's it. Okay, and it's true, right? Because if you do something to the top of a fraction, and you do the exact same thing to the bottom of the fraction, I mean, you haven't changed the fraction, you've just multiplied by 1, really, right? Because you've multiplied by 2 over 2, well, that's just 1. It just looks different. So we're going to do exactly the same thing here. So we're going to take this, the square root of 5 over the square root of 3, and we're going to multiply the top and the bottom by the square root of 3. So we go the square root of 3 here <coughs> and the square root of 3 there. And what we have up here, of course, is the square root of 15. And we have here the square root of 3 times the square root of 3 is just 3. That's it. There you go. There you go. And 3 is a rational number because you can write 3 as a fraction. 3 over 1. You got it. Okay, let's try another one. This looks a little more complicated, <clears throat> but the concept is exactly the same. I mean, it's fine, actually, the way it is, except for that irrational number, the square root of 2, in the denominator. We want to get rid of that, or at least we want to change the form so it's rational. And as I'm sure you've guessed, all we're going to do to the top and the bottom is to go ahead and multiply by the square root of 2. And the only difference between this one and the one we just did is that we're going to have to multiply the square root of 2 by two terms up top here. So you know what happens in the bottom. What's the denominator going to turn into? 2, right? Okay, square root of 2 times square root of 2 is just square root of 4, which is 2. Okay, so we have 4 times the square root of 2 up top. And then we have 3, excuse me, the square root of 3 times the square root of 2, which is going to be the square root of 6. And there we go. And that's it. I guess I didn't put my fraction line long enough there. Maybe I should put the 2 in the middle more. But that's it. Rationalize a denominator. A 2 is a rational number. All right. Let's look at this one. Very similar. <clears throat> See if you can give it a whirl. Go ahead. Try it. Pause it and try it. All right. Assuming you've paused it and tried it. Let's see what we do here. We know we're going to multiply by square root of 5. So we get 2 times the square root of 5. And we get, uh, let's see here, the square root of 15 times the square root of 5, which is the square root of 75. And that is all going to be over 5. Okay. Now, the only thing you're going to need to change here, this 75 can be broken down. 
So what we can do actually, let's just go ahead and rewrite here. 2 square root of 5 plus, and then let's rewrite. What are some factors of 75? And again, if, you, if you're not sure, use a factor tree. But you might immediately see, oh wait a minute, that is 25 times 3 over 5. You could go, okay, the square root of 25, I'm going to bring it out here. It turns into a 5. So now I have 2 square root of 5 plus 5, and then the only thing left underneath the radical is the square root of 3, and all that is going to be over 5. And there we go. 5 is a rational number. Looks good. Okay. All right. Let's try two practice problems, and we'll uh, call it a day, and go ahead and pause it and try the first one. All right, well, let's, first off, we need to write this fraction as two fractions. So this is the square root of 6 divided by the square root of 23. All right, that square root of 23 looks pretty ugly. So we're going to multiply the top and the bottom by the square root of 23 and the square root of 23. Okay, well, we know what the bottom is and don't even have to think about it, all right? That's going to be 23. Okay, this will be the square root of 6 times 23, which you go ahead and do your arithmetic. That'll be the square root of 138, okay? And 138 breaks down. We can break it down if we want to. And that's going to be 2 times 69. And 69 is 3 times 23. And really, there's your three prime numbers. You can't really break that down at all or, you know, as a pair in there. So you're just going to leave it like that. So that is your answer to A. All right? Pause it and try and B. All right. We know what we need to do here. It's going to be multiplied by the square root of 3. That's going to be the square root of 3. Easy denominator. It's just going to be 3. So now we just need to multiply the, the, you know, the, three, the square root of 3 times both of those terms here. So that's going to be 4 times the square root of 3 plus... The square root of 5 times the square root of 3, which is the square root of 15. Okay, and there we go. As far as you know. Okay, that's dividing fractions with uh, square roots and rationalizing the, the uh, denominator. So we'll see you guys next time.